Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. I want to talk some very interesting data coming over through the ways of the Epic Store and how games are specifically selling. We've got some numbers regarding Borderlands 3, World War Z, Metro Exodus, and in the case of Borderlands 3, that game sold very, very well on EGS. The numbers are just an estimate, so take them with a grain of salt, but I do want to go over them. And also, Left 4 Dead 3 had some crazy leak yesterday by an HTC executive, but the development has been denied by Valve. I don't know if I should necessarily believe that, since obviously they're going to deny that, but let's take a look at that as well. So we knew that Borderlands 3 sold relatively well on PC. Of course, it was only available on the Epic Game Store. It should be coming to Steam sometime in April or May. And as 2K described the performance as the highest selling for the label in the initial five-day window. They never actually tell us specific numbers, which obviously is a little bit of a head-scratcher and should make you have some skepticism regarding exactly how well these games are doing. But nonetheless, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford boasted about the concurrent players when compared to previous Borderlands lands games on PC. We never get exact sales figures, however, but now website play tracker has attempted to narrow down an estimate of that by cross-referencing the nine most popular games on the Epic Game Store as they were recently revealed by Epic with data graph from the Xbox API on PC. According to play tracker, Borderlands 3 sold almost 2 million copies with World War Z a far, far second place at slightly above a million. That's still very impressive for a game like World War Z, which isn't necessarily a game I would associate with having a lot of hype attached to it, and them selling a million copies of that is still rather impressive. Metro Exodus is a game where I could see, okay, that may have not done as well, selling around 700,000 units, while Control and The Outer Worlds, which obviously was also available through Xbox Game Pass, couldn't even get near the 500k unit uh, mark when combined. Outer World specifically was labeled at 154,000, Control was around 244,000, so the numbers for Control, I would say, are rather disappointing. The Outer Worlds, not as much because I think the majority of people did go the route of buying that game on the Epic Game Store. Control, on the other hand, I thought was a fantastic game, and I do believe if it was released on Steam, it would have done considerably better. I really enjoyed my time with that game, and that is a little bit of a bummer. However, if they got this upfront cash from Epic Game Store, does it really matter how well the game sells? At the end of the day, what people have to understand is this is a business, and what Epic Games offers more than anything is a level of stability that a lot of people, when it comes to game development aren't familiar with. Stability is something that is very, very important. For a game like Control, especially given how Remedy titles have done in the past, I could see from their standpoint, hey, we would really appreciate that level of stability if we do release the games on the Epic Game Store. Because a lot of times with game development and releasing games, it's not just about releasing the best game possible. Sometimes the best games don't sell that well and they still don't break even and they end up being a money loser. Look at a game like Kingdoms of Amal, where I thought that game was phenomenal, but obviously Obviously, from a commercial standpoint and from a financial standpoint, it ultimately did not turn out that well as that studio ended up going under. There was a lot of things attached to that story. It necessarily wasn't just attached to the game selling poorly. However, it's a game that you know, I personally think deserve to sell a lot better, but ultimately that's how things kind of go. Borderlands 3, that 2 million number is very, very impressive. If that's accurate, that 2 million number is so impressive because remember, they got a significant amount of money up front, then they sold 2 million or so copies, and they probably got a cut of the revenue made by that, and then ultimately they're still going to release the game on Steam, and a lot of people are going to buy the game on Steam. Hell, there are probably some people that bought the game on the Epic Game Store, and then they also are going to buy the game on Steam just to have the game on Steam. I guarantee you there are people like that. However, with that 2 million number, you also have to remember, I believe AMD has been giving away copies of Borderlands 3 with their GPU, so that might have an influence on that 2 million number. I don't think it contributes to a significant number of that 2 million. However, it is something to take into account. So obviously, these games are selling really well. However, I do question the longevity of a business model like this. Epic Games cannot theoretically offer crazy crazy deals like this forever. Look, they have a crap load of money because of Fortnite, and that's really where all of this revenue is coming from. They've got literal FU money because Fortnite is so big. People spend so much money on Fortnite. It's kind of ridiculous that they've parlayed that into the Epic Game Store, and unfortunately... 
really the root cause of all of these games being exclusive is Fortnite. I know a lot of you guys already detest Fortnite as it is, but when you actually assess the situation, Fortnite is the biggest factor of that because if Fortnite didn't offer Epic Games that kind of revenue stream, they would not be able to parlay it into getting all of these exclusives. You think Borderlands 3 would be an EGS exclusive if they didn't have that Fortnite FU money? I highly, highly doubt that because it takes some FU money to get a game like Borderlands 3 to be exclusive even for a limited period of time. Even a game like Metro Exodus, World War Z, all of these games that are getting significant, significant checks from EGS. And hey, from a developer standpoint, great for them. Hopefully some of that money trickles down to the developers themselves and it's not all just kept for the publishers. But honestly, probably is just kept to the publishers and the higher heads. But hey, I don't know that for a fact. So I can't really speak on that. But there you have the numbers for that. Again, they are just a narrowed down estimate by Play Tracker. But if that's to be believed, those games are selling very well. Honestly, even more so than Border Borderlands 3, I'm very surprised at how well World War Z seemingly sold because that's a game I thought it would level out at around that 500,000 mark, but hey, north of a million, that is very, very impressive. All right, moving on from that, Left 4 Dead 3 development has been denied by Valve after seemingly being leaked by an HTC executive. Yeah, when I saw this pop up on my Twitter feed, I thought it was a little bit ridiculous. It was a little bit hilarious, but the original story notes Valve's 2020 publishing plans may be even more extensive than we thought. Of course, the Steam Overlords recently announced the Half-Life Alex. Uh, that's a very, very anticipated game, and that should be a huge release. Obviously, in the forefront of that release is to push VR, and Valve Index and every other VR platform is really going to benefit from that. However, another title so many people want to see and that might be in the works is Left 4 Dead 3. This information was seemingly leaked by HTC China President Alvin Wang Graylin, who posted some slides for a talk about the upcoming VR trends he's going to give, and it also noted... And what was interesting was that one of the slides noted Half-Life Alex slash LFD3 will drive consumer and AAA studio interest. Either that is one massive typo or Left 4 Dead 3 has been seemingly leaked by this HTC president. Now, do take it with a grain of salt because Valve followed up and they did issue a denial right away. They noted, we've seen rumors to this effect for the last couple of months. We did briefly explore some Left 4 Dead next opportunities a few years ago, but we are absolutely not working on anything Left 4 Dead related right now and haven't for years. It's clear some people are having fun creating misinformation to spin up the community and other outlets. Unfortunately, for now, a new Left 4 Dead game is not something we're working on. So that is very depressing. However, uh, this is an HTC executive, so you would think that Left 4 Dead 3 being a part of that slide would mean that it would be some sort of VR experience, or at least it would have a VR uh, focus. I actually think Left 4 Dead would be a really cool game in VR. However, that is one game I would not like to see be a VR exclusive. In the case of Half-Life Alex, it's a brand new experience centering a new character. If it was Half-Life 3, yeah, I would have some issue with that if Half-Life 3 suddenly became a VR exclusive feature, but how do you push VR as a platform, you do put the most compelling games possible. However, I think you can also push VR by adding a compelling layer to Left 4 Dead 3 as a VR optional experience rather than it being the crux of the experience. And that would be a little bit of a disappointment if that ended up being the case. Whatever the case may be, Valve is outright denying Left 4 Dead 3. But let's hope after the release of Half-Life Alex, let's hope that game sells really well. And by the pre-order numbers and all of those kinds of things. It looks like that game is going to sell really, really well. I mean, it's a brand new ground up built Half-Life game. Even if it's VR exclusive, it's going to sell pretty damn well. And I even imagine that Valve has gotten an influx of uh, Valve index sales. So they can look at that. They can look at the sales of Half-Life Alex itself and be like, okay, this game sold a lot of copies. What can we work on? However, Valve is a company that I don't think they are entirely motivated by just making revenue. Uh, their games would sell really well. Half-Life Life 3 would break the internet in terms of its hype and its anticipation, but at the same time, they are astronomically rich. Like, I don't think you guys realize how much money uh, Valve has. That's why they're not going out of their way to acquire all of these exclusives. You can say, well, wouldn't they acquire all these exclusives if they have the money? No, they don't care because even if Borderlands 3 doesn't release on Steam right away, they can sell all of these other games. They know that Steam is still going to be the forefront platform that everybody goes to. Is EGS going to ultimately make an impact if it does acquire all of these? 
these exclusives, sure, but it's not like EGS is ever going to overtake Valve, and that's because Valve has that suite of features for Steam, and people have become attached to Steam as a platform, and you already see it. You already see so many people get upset when an EGS exclusive is announced, even though it's in the best financial interest of a publisher or a developer. People still get pissed. They still say that they're going to end up pirating the game, or they're at best just going to wait for the game to come to Steam, but, you know, obviously some people have gone the EGS route to play these premier games like Borderlands 3 and World War Z, but nonetheless, there's also a subsect of people that, hey, they're just going to wait for games to come to Steam, they're going to buy it on Steam, and if they don't buy Borderlands 3 on Steam, hey, that's $60 they have to buy some other game, and Valve is still going to generate a gigantic amount of revenue, especially with all of the residual revenue streams that they already have with games like Dota 2, CSGO, they are just swimming in money, and right now, for somebody to say, oh, Valve has to do this, they have to do that, yes, it would be great to see specific things done by Valve, it would be great to see Left 4 Dead 3, it would be great to see Portal 3, all of these games that have the number 3 attached to them, but ultimately, does Valve have to? Do they need to? Are they absolutely pressured to release these games? They're not pressured to do anything at all, and that's why we've seen the stagnation in things like Steam sales, and we've seen stagnation in a lot of Valve's development opportunities just because they're not pressured to do so. If they were absolutely pressured, if someone were to come to them and say, hey, Steam's gonna die if you don't uh, make Half-Life 3 and it would actually happen, Steam would die and they had that pressure, yeah, obviously they would make Half-Life 3, obviously they would make Left 4 Dead 3, obviously they would make all of these games, but right now they probably see their resources are better spent elsewhere and that is kind of a depressing thought, but nonetheless, that's the reality we live in right now. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, Borderlands 3 sold really well on Epic Game Store, really, uh, Personally speaking, more surprised at how well World War Z did. I'm happy about that because I think Sa Saber Interactive did a really good job with that game. But nonetheless, surprising numbers there. And Left 4 Dead 3, if you're getting excited for that, maybe temper your expectations a little bit. Maybe it'll happen at some point. But right now, development has been denied by Valve after seemingly being leaked by an HTC executive. That's going to conclude this video. Let me know all of your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can always leave that in the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting but as always guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace out